going on guys Van Marger made the news again he got a DUI I'm pretty sure everybody's about as shocked as I am which is not at all I'd like to say yet again he just kind of keeps trying to push that he is not responsible uh I, I I think it's super disingenuous to never take responsibility for something you've done and he has continuously been doing that um pretty much everybody else is at fault for any minor infraction whether He's got some, you know, credibility in some of these arguments he's had. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, uh, you know, the Jackass crew was 100% right in some of the way, the, you know, he got taken out of Jackass 4. There's a lot of stuff that is, you know, that's going to be legal arguments there. That's going to have to go back and forth between him and lawyers. And I, I, I want to say he won some of that. But at the same time, it still doesn't take away that they didn't have to, like, re-release it with him in it. So I assume there's still something proving that what they did was probably the right choice he has been spiraling out of control basically almost steve-o levels of uh insanity he's shown up to a lot of events drunk now this is before he was supposed to uh you know be on probation but he would show up to events drunk getting mad screaming at people to take him back somewhere he wouldn't show up to these like q and a's he was being a complete actual jackass uh basically i'm going to invent a new phrase for him i'm gonna call it the uh gimpy moose knuckle instead of a jackass because being a jackass would be kind of funny and this is just super sad and depressing but basically a lot of this he's pretty much just kept pushing to somebody else uh there was a video and it was tagged i had to uh you know i had to check it out and it was tagged in one of my in the last video i did which was a clip of uh bam talking to his dad and his dad saying that he felt that you know, if he knew his son was going to be like this, he wouldn't have raised him like that. You know what, man? What? And there's rich people and like kids that are assholes. And I'd rather be a poor guy with a kid that's nice. How about that? Let's go back to the old days. Well, let's go then and quit bitching about it. It's up to you to go back to the old days. I can't, I'm going to be an asshole forever. Well, then, I make well, money well, off of it. I don't know what the fuck I did wrong because I thought I raised you perfectly. What do you mean? You let me skip school and shit and go skating? To get your goals, your dream, and I thought I was doing the right thing. Apparently, it wasn't. Well, I like it, but if you don't like it, then fuck. When you read about all the rich people, their kids do drugs and kill themselves. I'd rather have a kid that was with me and this and that than any fucking money. So, uh, take that. Well, I gotta fucking skate. Like, dude... Like, that's your parent. He he has been known to treat his parents like shit. Now, as a kid, as a little delinquent, like, child mind I had, yeah, I thought he was, like, edgy and cool and rad. And, you know, growing up more and more, other than the, the more scripted stuff, uh, the goofy stuff, you know, it just it makes me realize how much of a pain in the ass he was towards his parents. But to kind of get back on track, basically, what has happened, he got DUI. And the DUI has pretty much got these lawyers up in a tizzy. They're trying to address the whole thing. They're like, oh, you know, he's a good guy that's suffering from addiction. And I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, for somebody to want to get better, they have to actually want to get better. Like, you can't help somebody without them wanting to actually do it themselves, too. Now, they keep saying, well, he's wanting to, he's wanting to, he's wanting to. I thought, like, the whole purpose of, like, getting better or even doing better, we'll, we'll take addiction aside. To do better in anything, you have to first address your own faults. You have to address where you are wrong and he has literally never done that you cannot argue that he has never addressed and been you know he he's never addressed his shortcomings and and shown that he has humility or anything he's always been the giant absolute brainless asshole that thinks that he can't be told no that's exactly what he's been like you have to take responsibility for your shortcomings and your actions when you can't you know, blame others, that's when you finally succumb to humility. And that's the thing I don't think he's done. Now, he's been humiliated, but he's got such an ego problem, he doesn't feel that. He still points the finger like a child who didn't clean their room, shoving everything under the bed. That's what he's like. But I wanted to show you a quick clip that involved his lawyers. Excuse the blurriness. Uh, the video itself was loaded and everything was fine. It clears up at a certain point. I even double-checked it by replaying it a couple times and yeah, it's just grainy for some reason. This is somebody who's a good guy that has a, 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 an addiction. There's not one person watching this broadcast that this uh, issue of substance uh, addiction hasn't touched. Ben Margera's attorney says he had been making steady progress, but last week he had a setback. Handcuffed in court, Margera told the judge his wife, who came to see him in court, has been his sober rock. But when he went on a road trip without her, 
He says he just screwed up. Everybody in the courtroom is interested in his health, but he is too. He's interested in getting better. He's interested in getting this case behind him, and we're going to make sure that happens. Margera is on probation after pleading guilty to violently assaulting his brother at his house known as Castle Bam. The judge in this case says he's sympathetic to addiction, and he knows Margera has had a couple episodes with public drunkenness, but he says rock bottom would be Bam getting behind the wheel and killing someone, and the judge says he won't let that happen. So, yeah, basically he broke po probation. Now, to give you a little bit of a timeline, Essentially, what happened was he, uh, you know, went after his brother. That was the alleged crime. He beat him up, whatever, attacked him. And to kind of, I guess, alleviate a lot of the problem, he had to go on probation. Now, I've been reading. I couldn't find anywhere. Maybe I missed it. So, totally, if I missed it, I missed it. But I didn't see anywhere where he had to actually, like, for his probation with alcohol and drugs, confirm that he wasn't on alcohol and drugs. Now, I know a lot of basic normal people, they're like, well, my cousin, you know, he's on probation. He has to, you know, piss test every single week or every month. Well, he's a celebrity. They don't have to abide by the same rules as the common folk, okay? People like you and me would have to go piss in a cup, yes, but he's not one of those people. He doesn't have to do anything. He has to do the bare minimum. He just got a DUI, and to try to prevent and circumvent a lot of this, they're trying to get him to go through testing for addiction. I want you to think about that. Nobody that I know that has been DUI, they've had three first offenses. They're clearly addicted to alcohol. They've never given them the chance to go counseling and go for, like, you know, an addiction thing. Like, they've never done that. They never try to say, maybe he's addicted. No, they're just like, ah, you know what, throw him to jail. Take away his license. Like, it's been an ongoing battle for him mentally, but, like, it doesn't happen for the common folks, so I'm sorry. That's just not, uh, it's not good. But to get back on track, basically, yeah, he did that to his brother, was on probation, and like I said, I read everywhere where he did not have to confirm that he wasn't doing drugs or alcohol, so I will stand by my previous video where I said I assume he was drunk uh, when he was fighting a homeless guy, which, by the way, it got age-restricted. I could not, I, I just couldn't get it unrestricted. Uh, it was going to be jumping through some hoops, and I felt like, you know what, I'm going to leave it there. I felt like it was done well enough, enough justice. Some people were a little pissy, but hey, you're talking about a famous person. There's still going to be people that are, like, straight up all dick and balls for him. So I'm not even too mad. I get it. You know, you're going to get hate. But basically, my problem is I was a longtime fan of this guy. And seeing him spiral out of control and not taking responsibility for his actions is, like, the worst thing you can see. And another thing, for him to be on probation and trying to do better, this, that, and the other. And uh, from what I understand, like, the first step to trying to get clean or be a better person, both of them go hand in hand, is to take responsibility for your actions. Like, if you're doing something stupid, you're supposed to be like, yeah, I fucked up, and I need to do better. And then you don't do it again. Now, addiction's way harder to deal with. I understand that. My point is, he's still pushing the responsibility on other people. He stated his wife's his anchor, which, fine, I get that. When you're going through, you know, addiction and stuff, you have to have, uh, you know, a, a person that you're accountable with. He didn't last five minutes and instantly started drinking, which is kind of a problem. His lawyers, I, I, I'm i sorry, but you're saying, oh, he's a good dude with addiction. I have 90% of people can be good people and then be addicted. I think it's a cop-out to try to play to everybody's uh, empathy and humanity by saying he's such a good person. I don't think you understand how much, how much of an asshole he really is to a lot of people. He's bailed out of Q&As just for, like, whatever diva reason he had. And literally verbally abused, like, some of the, uh, you know, the management or whatever they were. I can't even remember what he was. But he was abusing the guy verbally right in front of everybody and treating him like shit because something didn't go his way. And he just wanted to go back to the, you know, hotel. And I think he got, he was drunk when he showed up. So it's like an uh, ongoing thing. And I know steve -O, of all people, somebody that's completely, you know, turned their life around and is trying to do better is probably hurting right now. I think even, you know, Johnny Knoxville was suffering from alcoholism for a while. And after he pretty much broke his pee-pee, I'm pretty sure he's probably needing a drink real bad right now. But out of everybody, I'm pretty sure Steve-O, uh, he's done a few, I think, a few, a few podcast episodes with him. And after that whole diss track and all that, I'm almost positive Steve-O's at wit's end. And he's just, at this point, just praying for his buddy. I don't know if he's religious, but I'm pretty sure whatever a non-religious person would do, good vibes, whatever, you know, people will say. But I'm pretty sure at this point he's just really hoping and praying that he'll come out of this, uh, you know, better person. Which, 
I know, I, I understand, a lot of people want that, and I got you. I, myself, have given up on one of my favorites ever getting better just because of the way he is. He will never take responsibility. He 100% thinks everybody else is at fault at all times. Uh, you know, that's just the way he was raised. He had money as a young kid. Uh, while being smart and pretty business savvy in the sense of how he made the money, uh, you know, he was never told no, so he doesn't understand the concept. I think that's the general problem. Never told no, was always pretty much given his way, and it makes him super delusional in that. And being topped off that he's an alcoholic and drug addict, it, it was apparently just Adderall, so I don't know what drugs he was taking. But if it was just Adderall that was prescribed to him, well, yes, you can still be addicted to what you're prescribed to. That's a huge problem. That, that's a real thing. But, uh, you know, alcohol itself, he's addicted to it on top of that being a prima donna that has never told no. Yeah, that's a complete disaster zone. But yeah, that's about all I got to say. Y'all have a good one.